Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War Campaign 2, Week 8, Day 1. So today, of course, main thing we're going to be doing is going over all of the Chapter 8 uh, tasks, or at least all that can be done today. Uh, as usual, there is a location where all of them exist. Uh, it's on the uh, Gems of War forum, if we go over to uh, the official gemsofwar.com. And we go over to Fulham, and we try finding that one specific post uh, right there. Luckily, it's very far up if you look for the Monday of. And uh, we click right over here. We can see all the tasks. So, uh, we got ourselves a uh, win 22 battles with a jewelry weapon. Uh, pretty easy just with, with a quick kill, kill, quick kill Rowan. Uh, then we have a win 5 explore runs in Drifting Sands at difficulty 8. Um, yeah, so you just have to expand, basically explore, um, there. Um, we'll probably just do it on 12, because why not? Get our, uh, extra loot in. Uh, complete, uh, a delve three times at level, uh, 90, or higher. You could wait until the Tuesday event for this, however, you can also just use your three daily delves on a delve that is at 90 or higher. If you're still progressing through a delve, that would be best. Otherwise, we could do it at 500 and just do three of them quickly. Uh, which we'll do in City of Thieves. Otherwise, you can just kind of progress three of your normal battles on a delve. Like if you're at like 250, 260, 270 or something. Um, complete all the uh, battles in a single adventure board, unfortunately twice. Which means we cannot complete out silver all the tasks today. Luckily, the roar is a completely useless weapon, so it doesn't really matter much. And then tomorrow, we'll have to do three summoning stones. Which means as soon as we go to our daily of the adventure board tomorrow... We basically have them all done because that takes like seconds to go do these summoning stones. And as far as all the bronze, open 50 gold chests, that's free. Two event keys free. Match 90 brown gems in any battle. Doesn't take too long. Four battles with Dervish Clash. Got to go out of your way for that, but still quick. Uh, win battle using the uh, Desert Banner, uh, even quicker, just with like Rowan Quick Kill Team, which you can do for like most of those. Uh, defeat one treasure gnome. That unfortunately will likely require using a vault key if you want to get it done quickly. However, it can be done without a vault key, but uh, it does make it go quicker. I have nothing else. You can get the vault key off the um, current war lore event, which we'll be doing some today most likely. Uh, uh, kill nine uh, monster enemies. Uh, that'd be pretty easy just in Drifting Sand itself. Um, you could probably even synergize that with the Explorer Gold if you wanted to, uh, which we might actually end up doing. Though it wouldn't really matter too much. It would take like a few battles to get the kills anyways. Uh, kill 13 yellow uh, enemies. Uh, that could be done in... I guess White Helm would be pretty good for that. I would even mention... I keep forgetting. It actually mentions the suggestion onto the right as well. Uh, and it does actually mention White Helm yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is one of the heavier yellow based kingdoms. Uh, defeat one Scorpius. This I believe you could do during the War Lore event. Alternatively, there's like a billion probably in PvP. And alternatively, alternatively, you could do an Explore 12, or any Explore for that matter, uh, but of Drifting Sands. And other than that, um, you gotta win four battles using a Drifting Sands uh, team. Uh, which means we have to go and make up a weird team real quick and then just quick kill with like a Dawnbringer or something. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the game plan then. Sounds simple enough. And that is our objective. Anyways, hello everyone! Hope all of you have been doing well. Hope all of you are ready for the holiday. Hello, Ricardo! Uh, hello, uh, hope all of you are staying safe for it, too. Uh, I did actually go shopping today. Uh, actually, one of the reasons I didn't have the video up yet. Uh, we will be recording it, hopefully tonight, if not uh, very early tomorrow. But, um... I finally have everything for Thanksgiving. I had to go to two different places because they were missing a couple things I needed. But, uh, all Thanksgiving, uh, food-related shopping... It's finally done. Um, but anyways, hello Ricardo, hello Cookie, hello John, hello Isabel, hello Bill, hello, hello everyone. <laughs> That's everyone, or everyone who has spoken out of the shadows. Anyways, um, let's go and uh, go do our things. So uh, let's go over here. Oh, also, as the title mentions, though I didn't mention yet the stream, we have redeem codes again. Also, Adventure Board's really good today. I saw this this morning, too. Uh, obviously, I didn't do it because we always save it for nighttime. But, um, yeah, uh, six yellows with the Imperial. Always great to see Imperials. Uh, but anyways, that's not what I wanted to click on. Uh, what I wanted to click on was these. Okay, so should we start with bronze? I guess we'll start with bronze. Uh, silver's kind of locked, but most of it's pretty straightforward. Same as the gold is kind of going to have its own linear thing. So I'll just start with bronze, it looks like. Work our way up. So uh, this one's super easy. Throw down 50. Done. Okay, next. Two event keys. Throw them down. Easy. Done. Uh, then we got our next one, which is... I do not remember. 
Uh, let's see. No, I don't want any of that junk. Uh, now we use two event keys. Also, if you um, are lacking event keys, don't forget you can get 10 every single week through this. It's always worth doing. I even still do it. It's 1,800 glory, 180 each. And you get 10 uh, event keys. That alone is worth it. You also get 20 maps, 1,000 souls, and 5,000 gold. However, even if it was just event keys and nothing else, it'd still be worth it for 180 each. Because you're basically buying event keys for 180 glory instead of 15 gems or 13.5 gems if you're buying them in bulk. Which is much better. It's also really good for whenever you're doing these because uh, it would normally cost 30 gems. However, if you do it with uh, glory, it only costs you 360 glory. And it is much better to lose 360 glory than it is to lose 30 gems, that's for sure. Uh, but there you go. And that is that. On to the next thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got the brown. Oh yeah, this is probably going to be one of the more time-consuming ones that we have under. Though it doesn't take too long. Match browns in any battle. Um, do I have to go out of my way to build a team for this? We could theoretically just explode a bunch. Um, I might actually just start doing the jewelry one. And we just passively get that done. So we got to go quick kill with uh, jewelry. Uh, best way to do this is probably just find any kingdom that we already are super low on. Like Zacian Explore 1. Yep, I thought so. So now we just switch over to uh, Rowan build. Uh, set our weapon to any jewelry option. And we should pretty much be good to go. Uh, we'll go and uh, replace the fire sword that we still have set for when we did it last uh, Monday uh, to any jewelry. doesn't matter as long as it doesn't block Rowan. Uh, weapon type, where are you? I'm looking for the jewelry. Anything that doesn't block her, sure that works. And we could change our banner to uh, good banner. Uh, where's good banner? That's not good banner. Um, why is it? Mine's yellow. Uh, good banner. Okay, we're good to go. And all we have to do is win um, until we have all the browns, or until we do it 22 times. We can get that first gold task out of the way, hopefully, on the time of how long it will take us to get browns through this method. This should still be giving us browns. Let me just double check that it is progressing both. It should be. Uh, it should be a very small amount, but it should be. Um, it doesn't matter the amount, because uh, we're getting done the gold task as well, so it works. It works perfectly fine. Yeah, you could also kill monsters in the World Lore event. However, it's obviously uh, a little bit quicker going for quick kills. However, the earlier part of the War Lore events still going to be quick as well. Uh, this War Lore events are a little bit weird, though. Uh, we don't have really have mo many multi-hit uh, options. It's all strikers and one other typing. I forget what the other typing was. However, they generally don't really have that much for um, hitting multiple enemies. A couple of them mythics do. But most rest of them are all like single target stuff. Or uh, if they do hit multiple, they don't really hit the other ones that hard. They mostly only hit one single target. So, um, so it's going to be a little bit clunky since it's like one shot at a time, which isn't horrible, but, uh, it's a lot slower than if they all died simultaneously. Uh, there are a few mythics that can hit multiple for this event. However, they are mythics and a lot of people might not have them, uh, which is why we're going to be showing two different teams. I already have the, uh, cheap and other team made up for it. Um, which I believe I made almost all the teams for the video. The only thing I didn't make was the, in, um, the teams for tomorrow yet. And I didn't make the... Though that's pretty straightforward normally. And I didn't make the teams for... The class event, I think? That's normally pretty straightforward too. It's probably Dawnbringer with like triple... Uh, something with yellow link or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll find out. But i um, pretty sure that's what you have to use for that. Depends what falls under the restriction. Because it's going to be Dervish class. So I believe that's humans from... Um, Humans from the wait. Never mind. Dwarfish Hero class is uh, monster, isn't it? Never mind. Duh. It'll be monsters from um, Drifting Sands. What am I saying? Leona's Empire is the uh, human one. Actually, there's a couple human ones, but uh, yeah, it'd be uh, monsters from um, from Drifting Sands. I always confuse. I'm not sure why, but uh, something about um, Drifting Sands and Leona's Empire I always confuse because they're both the two Sand Kingdoms. There's something about some aspects of them. <laughs> I sometimes mix uh, with each other. Also, hello, Roberto. Hello, H G Addict. Hello, Defiant. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Also, hello, Andre. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. King Mikhail does hit everyone. Uh, and that's not really considered a low rarity option, though. Generally, when I build low rarity option teams, I try to stay ultra rare below. Ever so occasionally, I'll throw in epics. But, um... If there's, like, literally nothing, that will work ultra rare below. 
But uh, generally, I try to keep it ultra rare and below for uh, cheap teams. Occasionally epics, never legends or mythics. But in the team I built, I actually did not use King Mikhail. Mostly because I just piled a billion mythics. Though it might be worth mentioning him. Because I believe he is one of the only, if not the only option that can actually get all enemies. Though I didn't use him on my main team because he didn't fit. I don't think he fit. We could theoretically replace out Hero on that team and put it in. <laughs> but I was kind of using Hero to tank for the later battles. Who knows, maybe it is better with King Mikhail. I haven't actually tested it one way or the other. It is in first slot too, so King Mikhail could gain his Enrage. The only problem with that is if he eats his Enrage, he eats his damage. So that's not that much extra damage. Hello, Marbarashi. Welcome. How have I been doing today? Pretty good. You finally got the Treasure Hunter achievement today after all these years? Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, that can be a little hard. Actually, what percent of people even have it done? Uh, there's all the tasks. Is there any way I can make this go away without... Um... Oh, yeah, there is. Duh. I forgot. You just drag it. Uh, I want, um, let's see the achievements. What's the, uh, I actually didn't, forgot you could even do that. <laughs> the little Steam browser thing. Uh, I am looking for percent of people that did the treasure map achievement, at least on PC. Uh, because I can't really check it quickly on anything else. What's the percent? Six percent of people have got it done. It's probably one of the most skill-based ones, though. Even though it's super luck-based, too. Um, it's one of the only few achievements that actually require skill to complete, though. A lot of luck, but still some amount of skill. I wish they would add more skill-based achievements. A lot of the achievements are just, uh, grind, 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 and then you get it. Very, or super ultra luck-based, like the Epic Valky one that we still don't have. Very ridiculously few of them are based on skill. Like, do an arena run without losing, or, um... Which is pretty easy to do, but still is technically a skill-based one. And uh, the double um, vault one. But yeah, I believe the double vault one is the hardest skill-based um, achievement currently in the game. They really need to add more. Like, win uh, uh, every battle during a guild war. Or, um, actually, is that one? I don't think that's one. And just kind of stuff like that. I don't know, what would be another really hard one? Uh, reach max rank in PvP, like the 1.9k thing, without ever losing. Could be one, though I think they still want to change that system. So maybe they would add that achievement once they finally change that system. Uh, maybe do, uh... Oh, that'd be an interesting one. Uh, win, uh, though that would slightly be pay to win, though, too. Win a, a level 500 pure faction without losing a single troop. We've done that, I believe, three times, I think. However, you could literally just pay to win all the stats. <laughs> and then get it pretty easily. If you really wanted to. So that wouldn't be as skill-based. No, no, I'd still like to see more of them. Oh, also, we got the MOA. Uh, fun fact about the MOA. Uh, it was the first Battle Crasher before Battle Crashers ever existed. Um, they actually just tested the mechanic uh, one Thanksgiving, I think, in 2018. Um, and then it came as a full-blown mechanic into the game. Like, they were just doing it as, like, almost like a one-off event kind of thing. But they were kind of just testing it, and they were like, okay, well, let's add this as a feature now. And then they did. <laughs> But uh, Moa is theoretically the first Battle Crasher that ever existed. So much so, the Battle Crashers didn't even exist when it was a Battle Crasher. That's how much it wasn't a mechanic yet. <laughs> but it is now. Yeah, I believe that was back in 2018 they did the first ever one of it. Thanksgiving 2018. 
How close are we on anything? Oh, we already did both of them. <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> I was going to say. I got distracted. We're already done. So that one's going to be a little bit annoying just because we got to do a lot of Explore 12 grinding. But hey, at least we get our Explore 12 grinding in to set a slightly harder kingdom that has a bunch of Mina burning. But uh, win any battle using your hero with the Dervish hero class. You know what time it is. Hello, Rowan team that we were just using. I've come to change your hero class. Uh, let's see. Class, Dervish. Time to go get four wins. And then we can move on to the next one. Also, um, oh, I already mentioned it earlier to stream, but I'll re re mention it. Uh, we do finally have codes again. Finally, finally. So we'll have codes um, probably once we get near um, finishing all tasks. Probably when we finish all tasks, because uh, they're not going to take that long. Not counting the silver ones, obviously. We'll hand out a code and then we'll switch into um, World Lore Event. Get some of that in there. That's pretty much be the game plan then. We'll finish out all the tasks, hand out the code, and then do a little bit of War Lore event. At least to scratch some. Because I'm not sure if I'm actually going to need to do the War Lore event for any of these tasks. We could maybe for the monster one. Besides from that, most of them don't really need it. I guess theoretically we could do it for the Scorpius too. But uh, we could probably do it within PvP within like 30 seconds. Hello, Corey. Hello, um, Tyrion. Welcome, welcome. There we go. Easy as that. On to the next one. Oh, uh, well. Look at that. We gotta do the complex change of going to here and changing you to uh, brown yellow banner and then continuing what we were just doing. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what am I going back in there? Uh, go back to explore. So we can win more, four more times and keep progressing it forward. Wait, is there no Scorpius in the World Lore event? Never mind. So yeah, PvP method is. I was going to do that regardless. It's just always quicker. Unless you're at a level range that just really doesn't have it. But at least in endgame, at like my level range, it has always taken like a minute or less for every single one. Pretty much. Hello, Jonathan. Welcome. And hello, Lestat. Welcome, welcome. You found him on the explore task. That's pretty funny. Wait, is that guaranteed? It probably is because everyone has the same one. However, you'd want to make sure you have the explore task up, though. Because that's one of the objectives. So you don't want to do the... Um, uh, I mean the, um, the adventure board, I mean. Oh, never mind, you say explore. Yeah, you can find me explore 12 during, um, during the explore runs there. I thought you said, um, adventure board for a second. Uh, hello, DS, welcome. Because if it was adventure board, everyone has the same battles for that. I was thinking like, oh, we have a yellow legendary thing. Maybe it has a Scorpius. I don't think it is, though. Are you trying to get Shibanu Vespera? Uh, still, you already have Scorpius. Worth it? Um, Probably not. Though, if you uh, really, really want to get her, you can try. But um, the drop table is unfortunate. Kind of like a 50-50 roll. Like, even if you get about a thousand keys in, and you get lucky enough to get your Mythic in a timely manner, it could still be a second Scorpius, which in the current state of the game is pretty bad. <laughs> you could do two uh, uh, stats to all Browns per turn or something, but um, obviously that's not really too effective. Oh, yeah, I already did my four battles. What am I doing? Well, if nothing else, free grind. Free hero class XP. I'm pretty sure we did all our battles by now, like probably two times over. Wait, we have to do treasure hunt? I don't think we had a treasure hunt objective. Do we? I don't recall raiding one earlier. 
Okay, uh, we got a uh, vault. Let's go do a vault. Uh, theoretically, you don't have to do a vault for this. Um, I could change my team to actually be good. I actually am because I believe I finally finished all the ones that we needed to do. Let's hope so. So I'm going to switch back to Archmages and switch back to um, uh, Doomed uh, Scythe. Oh, and change back to Banner of uh, Trident. Okay, we should be good now. Should be good. I don't think we had any other task that requires us to use a specific thing that would change it. Because we already got the Hero Class one, we already got the Banner one, and we already got the whatever the other one was. <laughs> I think we're fine at this point. Ah, uh, my alignment got ruined. I think we still go for it, though, at this point. So let me take some mana first. At least we can regain alignment. He's going to get a free skull over there. Do I just let it happen? I think I do. Let me take that first. Oh, perfect. We got alignment. Exactly what I want to see. I uh, didn't get full mana off it, though. Um, hmm. I'm going to take that and see what happens. Uh, that should be win. Uh, apparently not. And now it's win. So we get some extra gold off it. Oh, we do have a 60 turn one. Oh, I did not mean you try to use another key. But let's see what we get from our orb. <gasps> a blue! Our last two orbs have been blue! We have been blessed with blues. Uh, kill monster uh, enemies in any battle except training. Um... I think the easiest way is Drifting Sands. You could do it through the War Lore event. However, Drifting Sands will take like zero sight. Oh, I never took the star earlier. Gosh, I had that since this morning. I haven't taken the star this entire time. And it was for Tribute Chance too, wasn't it? It was. Come on. I missed a 2.25 Tribute Chance. Oh. Couldn't have got some gems throughout the day. Extra potentially. Would have been like one or two gem difference probably but uh still would have helped anyways uh let's lower this to explore one and i'll have to explore uh hire it to explore 12 again but for now uh let's go get uh the monster kills we should take like one minute i believe that it is one monster only though it's either one or two i need 13 this place is a pretty good amount i think we just got two or three this battle Sure, die quick enough, if nothing else. Though, of course, all explorers do. Uh, are you a monster? You are not. You're wild folk. Same difference. But uh, those two should be monsters. Don't you count as a monster, too? No, you count as a beast, though. I think he just replaced one of the monsters. However, I believe that still counts as a kill as a monster. It still definitely counts as a kill, so it should still count as a monster kill for us. Even if he replaces over a monster. But yeah, a lot of extra gold we can end up getting from those little mullahs. The Thanksgiving event. I'm not sure if we're doing they're we're getting anything else special for the Thanksgiving event. I don't think we are. We're probably getting like an adventure board for like 100 gems or something cool like that. But I don't think we're getting like a new um, troop like we did for Halloween or anything. That'd be cool, but I don't believe we're getting anything like that. Yep, there we go. There's all the monster kills. Okay, um... Let's go grab the last little reward there. We got Yellow Slayer, kill yellow enemies in any battle except training. Um, well, we can just use our team and keep doing White Helm. Theoretically, we could actually stay where we are. This place already has a decent amount of yellow. I'm just going to stay here. It's not the best yellow farming kingdom, but we already have it set up. Might as well just keep doing it. That's two out of our 13 that we need. 
This place has a decent concentration of yellow. Definitely not the highest in the game, but um, we just got two into three, so it's doing something right. And then another three. So definitely a decent option. Oh, now it's a two because of the imp I mean the um the gnome. You know you want to give me an epic Volky for that. That is very much not an epic Volky. Also, this weekend, Vault Event weekend. You know what that means? The hunt for the epic Volky continues. It's almost going to be a series on this channel now. The hunt for the elusive first epic Volky. It better not take us till 2021. If we're in 2021 and still don't have it, that's pretty insane. There we go. Those are overkills already. Easy as that. Okay, now we need to go kill one Scorpius. Um, the easiest way to do this is to go to PvP. Uh, check if it's here. If not, go to casual PvP. Check if it's here. If not, keep clicking this until you see it. No. No, 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 Scorpius isn't a good option, so it might be a little bit rare to see. So some people might set it to help people. Oh, that firebomb team might have been. I should probably check firebomb teams in case they're adjusted for the event. The other alternative is explore 12 it. But this is slightly quicker, I think. We'll slow this time. Nope, no Scorpius there. Oh, oh pff, there was a Scorpius right there. Okay, good. We got it again. <laughs> I just re-picked out of uh, what where I was looking for. Fail. Uh, and I was run like a Zugov team. Where's my Zugov team? All right, should be good to go. All I got to do is pull up mana, Zugov the Scorpius, and I believe we won. Oh, nope. Moa said otherwise. Moa says we didn't win. You just replaced the firebomb. Oh, why did I do that? He was already dead. I didn't realize he only had 11 HP left. Okay, there we go. Didn't really matter. <laughs> and there's a Scorpius kill. It took a little bit more repicking than uh, normal, but still took like a minute. Despite that. See, even when it's horrible, it's still the quickest method. Uh, win any battle using a Drifting Sands team except training. So this one's probably the most annoying common we have this week. Just because we have to um, change our team. But yeah, where's everyone seeing that Silver Task? I don't see any Silver Task. Um, oh, complete three treasure hunts with 60 plus turns. I was distracted by the third one to a degree that I didn't see the second one. Aha, that's where everyone's seen the treasure hunt thing. Oh, that's a lot of them. Three treasure hunt at 60 plus turns. Yeah, that's pretty time consuming. If you don't get lucky on it. I don't know, how long did it take you guys to get it? Oh yeah, I see the problem now. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll still go for it uh, manually. Actually, both the two first silver tasks take quite a while. We got to go complete three level 500 delves, technically. And then we got to go th do three 60 turn treasure maps. That's actually some beefy silver uh, this week. Those two tasks probably take more than all the other tasks combined. Uh, win any battle using a Drifting Sands team except training. Okay, let's go do that. That's the last silver one, right? I believe so. Or br last bronze one. So, easiest way to do this is find a junk team that I'm going to be replacing. Uh, when we go to the video, then we go to Drifting Sands, and then we basically just banner it up into a quick kill option. Uh, Drifting Sands, where are you? I'm looking for a link. Drifting Sands with link. Go. Uh, we got yellow, we got red, and we got uh, blue. Actually, you know what? Let me do brown because I'm going to use this for the... Uh, for the um oh no it has to be monsters i keep forgetting why do i keep confusing this with dervish class i mean with um the other class i keep confusing it with leonis empire oh i'll still go down this route why not uh and then we go heavy into brown purple and we use archmages and we should be good to go oh wait never mind it has to be pure dervish oh gosh we gotta use the hero class it's fine though so we'll go this and we have to use the class of dervish otherwise it doesn't count as pure uh drifting sands otherwise and I don't believe this thing is half minute start. Which is unfortunate. What's that one trip that gives monsters 50%? I actually completely forget off the top of my head. 
I don't think it's gonna matter much though. All right, and then we just go on explore one, which is already set. And then we change our team to that. And there we go. Okay, right, should be good to go. Let's just take a bunch of brown, we win. Is Dervish a good class? No, it's uh, one of the worst classes in the game. Uh, the only good thing it has, it has the highest dodge in the entire game. There's actually currently nothing in the game with higher dodge chance than Dervish. It doesn't have a 50% though, it has a 30% into a 20%. But the math on that comes out to a 40-something percent. I think a 44, I forget the exact math. Um, it was like a 43, 44, somewhere around there, is what a 30% into a 20% does. Uh, because it's diminishing return due to it being individual chances. It's not a 50% chance, it's a 20% and a, it's a separate 20, uh, 30 chance. It doesn't combine together for one big chance. They both get rolled independently. But um, it's the highest dodge chance in the game. That's the only good thing it has going for it. Highest dodge chance in the game at about a 43-ish percent or so. Everything else about the class, pretty underwhelming. You can kind of be okay in monster teams, but um, not really worth it. There we go. Done already. Easy. Okay, all bronze done. Well, not done done. <laughs> That's just one section of uh, of three. Okay, now for the really time-consuming ones. Let's go do... Um, so we got three pretty time-consuming sections. Uh, the next three tasks, which are do all the gold one, or uh, do uh, five drifting sands at Explore 12, basically. Do uh, five uh, uh, three delves at 500, essentially. And then do three 60 plus turn treasure maps. So let's go do those. Uh, let's do the uh, Delve one first. Um, City of Thieves is the best location for uh, this. Uh, we'll do it right over here. Go to our uh, Delve. Go to 500 because it has to be 90 or higher. And we use this team. Mountain Crusher, Hiking, Iron Guts, uh, Zugoth, and Leprechaun with 20% mana start. Two seasons. This is currently the strongest Delve team in the entire game. Any Delve that can run this is amazing. And we do it specifically in City of Thieves because if we wanted to do side farming rooms, it's just good for that. And it's also only three rooms. Uh, and obviously any uh, delve where is both uh, three rooms and can use this team or basically the quickest delves in the game. I'm not sure what the other alternative is, if there's even another alternative. But uh, any delve where it's three rooms and you can use um, this team is the quickest delve in the game for level 500. Really, all that, and you're still not dead. She's just going for the one shots. Hello, Bushka. Hello, Ice Fist. Welcome, welcome. The one after the um, the treasure map task is a two turn adventure board. That's pretty easy to do. It's just we have to wait till tomorrow for it. The rest of silver afterwards is really easy. Because all we have to do is do today's adventure board, then do tomorrow's adventure board, and then do three brown summoning stones. So it's super easy. Of course, we have to wait till tomorrow, but it's an easy one. It's something we already would have done. We just have a day delay on actually getting the reward. I should kill the summoner. Yeah, we read about all of them were at the beginning of the stream. So we kind of already know what all the tasks were. I just forgot that treasure hunt was one of them. I kind of misread it as we were reading them. What troop would you use if you don't have Zugoth? Um, you just use another man accumulation option. Oh, what's the color restriction for this place? I actually forget. Uh, something like Harpy Mage is pretty good. Uh, really, literally anything like apothecary or something. Um, I forget what the color restriction for this place is. Is it blue purple? I guess apothecary would work then if it's blue purple. But um, yeah, I think it's blue purple for this place. I can't even remember. But um, yeah, um, that would probably be the best way to go then, if you need an alternative. Theoretically, you can even do stargazer if you some if you uh, don't start with uh. 100 uh, attack plus on uh, Iron Gut. Because that will help put him into 100 plus. Immediately. 
It has some power, so it being behind the Leprechaun wouldn't matter. Either that or Apothecary would be pretty good there. Uh, only the middle battle can have a mean to devour. So you theoretically don't need a curse option for this place. Um, just because uh, you could just choose between one to two middle battles that doesn't have a mean to devour. And both the first and final battle, if I'm not mistaken, does not have any impervious here. Which is uh, one of the other good benefits of this place. And even if there was something that had immune, uh, we can use the iron gut. I mean, the uh, Zugoff for it. But uh, if you don't have Zugoff, um, it actually doesn't matter too much for this delve setup. Like this battle right here, we know for sure there's zero immune to devourers. So it's not really that big a deal to have a counter to immune to devourer. And we know for sure the first and last battles can't have it. How does your hourly tribute look like in terms of glory, etc.? I haven't keep track of the exact data. I assume it's a couple hundred every single time I take it. Might be a little bit higher. I normally don't pay attention to any value that isn't the gem. <laughs> to be honest, that's literally the only thing I look at every tribute. Is how many gems we get. Most every other value I ignore. Just because the other values tend to be kind of consistent based on how many gems you get anyway, so. Like the average that you get for them. Like obviously some tributes will give slightly more than other tributes. But generally speaking, if you kept getting 15 gems, the amount of all those three other resources, or you know, every other resource would be pretty much even. Uh, or you know, even as in... Every single time it'd be about the same, give or take like 10-20% difference in one direction or the other. Alright, third one. And then that task will be complete. Is this a general team uh, be using for second fleet tomorrow? Um, can this be used for second fleet? If so, yes. For the high level one. What's second fleet's colors? Yeah, I'll probably mention this as the high-level team for the, uh, the video. Might as well. It's the best Delph team in the game. That I'm aware of. Obviously, we'll be showing a cheaper team for it, though, too. We'll probably just mention Truffle team or something. Pretty sure Truffle can be used. Because I believe if you have access to blue, you could forest troll double Truffle into Mirage Queen. Has a lot of cascade. Uh, I'm just gonna go for skull at this point. I hope he just randomly gives us one, which unfortunately he did not. But there we go. Alright, one more battle. I didn't even check at any point to see if these were actually counting. Wouldn't that be a fail if they weren't? Luckily they are. <laughs> Obviously. But, um, I have sometimes misread a thing before. And then we'll go and farm it for like a few minutes. And then we'll be like, hey, why did it not unlock? And then it's like, oh, that's not what we were supposed to do. It has happened before. That's why I generally like checking after like one or so. Just so we don't accidentally do that again. We've done it several times in the past. Yeah, blue-red, you can run standard truffle. Um, standard truffle requires only blue. Because it's forest troll, double truffle into any hero weapon or into um, a Mirage Queen. Depending on which build you're going for. Both work pretty well. Alright, now the treasure hunt one. We could either do the treasure hunt one or the drifting sands one. I think it's time. Let's go do the dreaded treasure hunt one. Also, do we have tribute yet? No, we don't. We can't even click that button otherwise. <laughs> It'd be blocked. Okay, let's go get those treasure hunt skills. 
Okay, let's see if we can get this first try. Has anyone actually gotten a first try today? When you tried doing it? Where you went, um... 60 turn plus treasure map three times in a row? Now that would be an achievement to add to in the game. <laughs> 60 plus turns three times in a row. That takes a good amount of skill and luck. I feel somewhat more so luck though. <laughs> Because you get some really bad start starting maps. So far so good on this one though. Um, I kind of don't want to move that yet. Uh, let's see. I'll take that. Grab the other one. But so far so good. We haven't won yet, but we're uh, in a pretty good position currently. Extra time. Extra time. Oh, I'll take that over. Okay, how close are we to the win? Uh, not quite. Ah, we could actually fall short this time. If we're not careful, this could fall short. We're so close. So ridiculously close. Ah, oh, we didn't get a good cascade there. Um. Oh, come on. If we lose this one. Hmm. Where are we at? I need one more five times or two four times. And we got it. We got it. Okay. Success! Okay, we can just throw the map at this point if we want to. Though, we might as well play it out. We're already in the map. Uh, let's see. I'll take that over. Grab that. Oh, why did it? I don't mind. That still works, I guess. Um... Gosh, that's congested down there. There you go. 71 turns. Got what we came here for. I got one down, two to go. First try on the first one. Let's see if we can get three in a row. Uh, let's look for the top first. Doesn't look like we have anything, so we'll take that. Got to check before you do. So far, pretty bad map start. Horrifically bad map start. Extra time. Still coverable though. Kind of. <laughs> this is looks like a horrifically bad map. I normally don't like taking those for five times, but uh, we're in a desperate situation right now. Extra 
Can I drop that? No. But I can move into it five times. Oh no! Unless it takes the thing. No! Oh, I'll fail. Uh, let's see. What do we still need here? I just want to get rid of those bronze coins, even though we don't get too much value out of it. Just to not have the bronze coins there. Once again, that's generally a move I wouldn't do, but we need the uh, 60 turn marker. <laughs> do I take a five times green? I really shouldn't. You should never do that. It lowers your loot so much. But um, that's not what we're here for. <laughs> we're here for the uh, 60 turns. Even if we got to scrap our loot to get it. Uh, let's see. That's a move you would like never do. <laughs> Unless your only goal is to get high turn count. Because the amount of value you scrap is absurdly high for doing five times, um, five times of pretty much any of them, but particularly uh, of chest and above. Like anything that is a chest uh, that into a five times loses you value, a lot of value, as far as overall loot for the thing. Uh, I'll take that over. Oh, did I just have five times there that I didn't take? Fail. Might have. Uh, are we in the clear? Oh yeah, we're already in the clear. Why am I trying to still play correctly? <laughs> we already won. Uh, let's see. So we got two in a row. Let's see if we can get three in a row. We're close. We're getting there. I just need to get one more. And then we got three 60 turns in a row. Oh, uh, I'll take that over. Though, if you do fail at doing treasure hunt for a long duration, you can use the gems that you got from failing it to skip it for 100 gems. <laughs> if you really wanted to. I would advise doing it, though. It would have to take you uh, over two hours for it to be worth... Um, Spending um, 100 gems to skip it. That or if you just really hate treasure map. <laughs> uh, let's see. But from a value perspective, it would have to take you over two hours to get uh, three 60 turn maps to be justified worth going for. Uh, the skip. Uh, what are we at right now? Oh, 85. I forgot. We're still on this map, aren't we? <laughs> We're still on the map that's going on for seemingly forever. Um, we might actually reach... Uh, no, we're probably not. I was going to say, we might reach um, 100. Definitely still possible. I doubt that we're actually going to get it right now, though. If we could cascade that together. If we had a chest right here, like if this was a bag, we could probably reach it. But because that's not a bag, we can't. I could try for one off of Sky. If we don't get it, we lose, though. Didn't get it. Oh, come on! You're one off! I want that so bad. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We still have that. What am I doing? Duh. Okay. Turn delayed, but, uh... Still work with it. Okay, I think this is the end of our map, though. I don't really see any other really big play. There we go. 93 turns. There we go. And we got only two. Gosh, we got four gems the first time. Now only two. Though we did scrap a bunch of green chests. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's go again. That's two in a row. Let's go get three in a row. Uh, I'll take that over. Grab that. Grab um, that. I see all that. I was just not sure how I want to take it yet. Hmm. There's a five times somewheres in here. How do we make it uh, so?
I did not do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. That did not quite do what I was aiming for. Uh, well, what do we grab? We'll take that for now. Okay, we might not be getting three in a row. Map's going pretty bad. Stakes were made. Uh, we'll go for that for now. Oh, that doesn't even give us the thing. Alright, we got a lot of bags this time around. I got a lot, a lot of bags. Like, way too many bags. Why does this course have so many bags? <laughs> They're getting in the way. I feel like they half the map's just been bags this entire game. Uh, and they're kind of a weird resource to take sometimes. Oh, that's a nice five times bag. Because there's so many bags, I'm surprised we haven't hit more five times bags. There's only a billion and a half of them on the course right now. Ah, oh, we didn't get a bag off the sky. And how many bags are present? I'm actually rather surprised we didn't. We're still quite a bit short. Hmm. I must want to condense this. Okay, uh, we need 10 more extra turns overall, as far as value there. Not sure if we're going to make it. It actually looks like it's going to be a little tight. Ah, uh, no five times there. Oh no, we might not get it in a row. Oh no. Yeah, it's looking rather sketchy right now. Too many bags. Way too many bags. Not looking good. Come on. <laughs> We're getting like no extra turn from Cascade. Uh. I just need to put a bunch of stuff together. I just hope it randomly progresses us. Come on, we're so close. I just need six more extra turns. Running out of board, though. To get that done with. Do I have a three cascade over there? I could set up for the following turn. No, I do not. Um... Uh, I was hoping for something off a of cascade. We're gonna have to just risk some very, very luck based cascades. Like that. <laughs> uh, did we actually just get it? I think we just sniped it. Did we really just snipe it? We did. That actually worked. We got it. We did it! <laughs> Three sixties in a row. We did it. I'm not sure if I ever actually bothered. I never really kept track. I think that's the first time we ever had a task for it. 
But we got, uh, or for that many anyways. But uh, we just got three 60s in a row. Ah, 360. Ha ha. But, um, get it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, three 60s in a row. Um, oh, we got a vault too without even trying. <laughs> that just kind of became one. I wasn't trying to do that. That actually lowers our loot unless we get gem keys. The only way that increased our loot is if we get gem keys out of it. Otherwise, it lowered our loot. But if you get two gem keys from it, that's the best drop in um, Treasure Hunt. It's not really worth trying to go for, but um, it is the best drop. And if every vault guarantee gave it to you, it would actually make this event or the uh, Treasure Hunt not horrible. All right, we're about to lose our map now. Uh, let's see. We'll take that over. Imagine if we casually got two vaults. <laughs> we weren't even trying to get a vault this time. Though getting two vaults is so much harder than one vault. Like, if you really try aiming for vault, one vault's not too bad. The harder challenge comes when you actually need to get two of them. Uh, let's see. I think this is the end of the line. This looks very much like the end of the line. Or it's going to be one of those maps where it looks like the end of the line a billion times. Until it actually finishes. Oh, I should take another one first. Um, that's over. Oh, wait, we got two turns, though. That's over. We didn't cascade anything. Uh, we'll try for it there. Didn't get it. Oh, wait. Where did we get our next turn from, then? Hold up. Still got a turn. I'm not sure we could use it anywhere, but we have a turn. Um... Double bag is almost guaranteed not to happen. Triple silver is literally impossible due to how cascades work with the thing. Um, I can try for double silver. I got zero. Ah, there we go. Three sixties in a row. Uh, what did we get from that? Oh, we got six glory keys. Uh, that's not as good. There's two gem keys. Two gem keys is what you want to see out of that. We got zero gems for that, by the way. That's what happens when you convert into vaults. Oh, we got tribute up. Uh, someone was asking about how much glory we get each time. Got 172. So yeah, a few hundred is generally where it falls. Like two to three hundred, I think. Or 150 to 300. Depends if you get like White Helm as one. I don't think we got White Helm as one of them there. Probably should have checked. Because White Helm makes up like 80 something or something. It's a really high uh, amount. If you don't get like the 40 something percent chance for it, it lowers the amount of glory that you see there by quite a bit. But, um,. Okay, there we go. We got that done. Uh, now we got to go do our adventure board. And we got to go do a bunch of explore. I guess we'll do our adventure board and dungeons right now. And then we'll go do explore. That is not where I want to go. Uh, I want to go switch to magic. Pure magic. And then we can go do um, both the two things we need to go do. So let's go clear out adventure board. And don't forget to go do it. Gosh, not only do you need it for the thing. Uh, do make sure to save it for the task. But uh, after you do your treasure maps. But... Um, that's not the team I want. Where to go? Oh, yeah, down here. Um, but yeah, definitely make sure to go grab that. Imperial Deed and six yellows. Really good loot. Really, really good loot. I've actually been doing pretty good on blues lately. I'm actually rather surprised. Blue orbs. We actually... Oh, that's not where I want to take it. Um, we got a major blue on uh, yesterday or uh, for Bounty Hunter. And we got a minor blue today. And hopefully we'll get a bunch of blues tomorrow for the... Uh, for the uh, faction. Also, oh, hello, analyst. Hello, uh, Tasco. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what team are you using for the campaign event this week? Uh, oh yeah, I never did show it yet. Um, it's um, a lot of AOE options. Uh, King Mikhail's probably one of the better value ones, but um, we also use several of the legend or, uh, of the uh, mythics. I mean. But we'll show it soon. Soon, TM. I'll have the video up in a little bit. I got a bit sidetracked with a couple things today. Main thing being, I finally got all the Thanksgiving shopping done. So I don't need any more food shopping between now and then.
Okay, what do we need here? Uh, we'll go grab uh, Phoenicia there. Get our manas. Dead. Also, we do have redeem codes once again. Once we finish out this and then go do the uh, explore thing, go hand out a code, and then we'll go and uh, mess with uh, invasions for a little bit. Actually, once we finish out our dailies right now, we'll probably hand out code. Then we'll go do the explore 12 thing. Then we'll go do... Uh, Small amounts of the uh, Ward Lore event. We're probably going to do a good bulk of it on Wednesday. It tends to be the way that it tends to go these days, I feel. Like, the way I break it up is um, we mostly do the tasks on Monday. And I'll still normally go over to the team for the event, but uh, we normally don't do a lot of the Ward Lore event. Then on Tuesday, we do almost entirely the faction. Then Wednesday, we do almost the entirety of the Ward Lore event. That tends to be the way it gets broken up. Just kind of works that way. And then Thursday we normally have downtime. Friday we normally have a new event of something kind. And then the other two days are just whatever we do. And Sundays are, of course, we do the preview for the following week. At least as much as we can go over. Because, of course, we can't go over Soul Forge. And stuff like that until uh, Monday hits because it doesn't get determined until then as to what they actually are. Oh, excuse me. Uh, what do we want here? Take that instead. And if anyone still has any other questions, anything else you want me to go over, let me know. And there's the Imperial. Definitely make sure to uh, remember to go get that. Really good loot. Any amount of deeds are. I feel like I'm so low on Imperials right now. It's like the main thing, I think, holding us back these days in the current state of the game. I can craft, I believe, about four or five by now with the shard things. Eh, definitely a little lack of Imperial right now. Always great to see more. I really hope they are planning on adding another method of obtaining them. Ever since they increased the cap for kingdoms, um, they never really gave us a substantial new way of actually accumulating them. So um, hopefully they will. Maybe a future update is planning on having it. Who knows? Maybe Treasure Hunt will have it. Probably not, but who knows? Could you imagine if Treasure Hunt became the meta for farming deeds? If that actually became a thing? <coughs> That'd be really funny. I almost want to see that become a thing. Imagine Treasure Hunt be meta for, <laughs> for um, deed farming. I highly doubt they would do that. It'd probably be combat associated. If they're going to add it to something. Where can you kill Scorpius? Explore 12 um, Drifting Sands. Or you could do it in PvP. Um, let me go hand out the code. I said after that we'd go do it. So let me go hand out a code. And then we'll go and um, finish out the final task. Which is a bunch of Explore 12 Drifting Sands. And then we'll go do... Um, uh, what's it called? And then we'll go do the Ward Lore event. Uh, let's see. Uh, where are all the codes? There's the codes. Uh, it's been so long since I used a code, I almost forgot how to do it. Gosh. Um, where's the thing? GemsAward.com, where are you? Where are you? You can tell I haven't used a code for a while. <laughs> the uh, It's all dusty from lack of use. It's actually been a month or so. As far as since we handed out a code. But we got codes again. There you guys go. There's a redeem code. Use it on gemsaward.com for the game code section. Your invite code can be found if your settings menu, whatever your game says in the bottom left corner right over here is what you put in for your invite code. Redeem code is right over there in chat. Just copy paste the random numbers and letters starting with 2-2. Two, two. And uh, give the same reward as always. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Enjoy, everyone. There you guys go. 
But we got codes again. And we hand those out every Gems of War stream. We stream every single night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Main loot in there being the one gem key, of course. And if nothing else, you can either use them immediately or save them for the upcoming Mythic. I actually forget if the next Mythic's good at all. I normally don't check until like a few days beforehand or like the Monday beforehand. That's because I feel like they change them quite often. So I generally like seeing what's final form is. Okay. Well, it definitely should work. <laughs> um, though it will only be active for about like 5-10 minutes until all the claims get used up. Uh, okay. Next order of business. Uh, let's go do explore 12. Uh, technically it says 8 or higher, but uh, obviously we'll just do 12. Uh, so uh, explore 12 in Drifting Sands. Uh, so I need to go and lose a battle deliberately so I can reset it back to 12. And then we can go do the thing. So we'll go retreat here. Uh, and then go to 12. And should be good to go. Okay, now I need to go change to uh, my team. And now we're good to go. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you do have to make sure that the task is active for it to count. Uh, this is why I always advise not doing your dungeons or your, um, or your, um, adventure board until you do all of your... Uh, tasks for the uh, week mainly because uh, there's a possibility that you need it and you might even need it for two days in a row so it is highly advised to wait on those and similarly uh, you don't want to accidentally <laughs> do one early and then realize oh I didn't have it active already but um, yeah that most commonly happens with dungeons and um, an adventure board however if you peeked out what the tasks are it could happen at any time if you forget that you don't currently have it active One the bad thing about peeking at the tasks. Uh, let's see. Because you already know what most of them are or all of them are. You might try doing them out of order. Which doesn't work. It has to specifically be active. The one you failed was 58 turns. Oh, that hurts. I was actually surprised we got three 60s in a row. Just because uh, there's a lot of luck-based things that can kind of mess you up. Even if you do decent. Oh, we got lucky. Now, I'm not sure if I've ever even bothered doing three 60s in a row. I never really bother keeping track in the past. We might have hit it and just never noticed. I know for sure I've done 200s in a row, though. Like 100 pluses. Uh, let's see. I'll take that down. Why are you no cast? There we go. And I should be a match. Uh, let's take the skull and he's already dead. Oh, we were stunned. Good thing that still killed. <laughs> Whoops. We were kind of stunned. Uh, that counts, right? Yep, one of five. Well, let's keep doing it. We'll do four more and then we'll go do the ward lore event for, uh, for a little bit. And then call it a night. And we'll have the video up soon, TM. If not tonight, uh, hopefully very early tomorrow. What is the Thanksgiving menu? Um, turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce, those um, little yam things. Uh, what are they called? 
the um like when you slice them caramelize them and do them in cinnamon and everything um not sure if they have a proper name i just called them sliced yams <laughs> isn't there a special name not candy yams um they have a special name glazed yams something yams they have a proper name um yeah, I completely forgot what they're called. <laughs> but basically, they're the yams. Yeah, candied yams. That's the that's the word. That. Or candy yams. Yeah, that. Yeah, candied yams. I knew it has a proper term. Um, what else? Um. Gosh, I'm actually starting to forget now. Oh, we ended up picking up cake. Oh, we didn't pick up a uh, pie this time around, though. And I'm almost getting pumpkin out of pumpkin pie every single season. Can't handle it every season. Too much pumpkin. Uh, yes, we're going to be doing the War Lore event for at least like 5 to 10 minutes. At least to show the team, if nothing else. Or teams, I should say. Well, the other one I won't be using, a low-level team, but we'll be using our high-level team. I'm really going to be making one uh, exchange, though. Oh, that reminds me. I forgot to pick up the rolls. Oh, no. It's not that big a deal. But it's fun to make little sandwiches out of the uh, things. It's not really a required item, though. I knew I forgot something. Uh, let's see. We'll take the... that... Grab that down. Also, it's really funny. Any Animal Crossing event, I believe it was in the trailer too. I forget where I found out about it. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was the trailer. But um, the turkey there makes a joke. Or maybe it was on their social media teasing it. But um, the turkey makes a joke that uh, people celebrate um, Thanksgiving or Turkey Day differently in other locations in the sense that they eat turkeys because the um, the uh, event in Animal Crossing is hosted by a turkey because it's Turkey Day. <laughs> no turkeys are killed in the making of Turkey Day in Animal Crossing. I'm not sure if we're going to stream it. If we do, it's probably just going to be combined into the Gems of War stream because I'll be busy throughout the day and I'm pretty sure quite a few of you will be too. So I'll uh, we'll add it at the end of the Gems of War stream or something. Assuming the event's still going on. I hope it lasts that long. It only lasts for one day, so I hope it goes that long. The Halloween one went all the way to midnight. Though it was the Halloween one, so <laughs> it would make sense that that one would go to midnight. Hopefully the Thanksgiving one does too. Uh, let's see if I throw that down. There's a lot of really good dining room items that come in in the event. Like, almost all of them are dining room items. Uh, let's see if I throw that down. And they have a spring and fall variant, because Southern Hemisphere obviously will have, um, has, um, Thanksgiving during, um, spring. And like most hemispheres that have it during, um, fall. Well, most hemispheres, there's only two hemispheres, but you know, more of the world lives in Northern Hemisphere than Southern Hemisphere. Uh, let's see. We'll take, um... Let's take that, I guess. I want a purple, but there's no purple. Uh, I'll take that over. Yeah, those little dinner rolls are nice. A little bit of butter, put some cranberry sauce in there, put the stuffing in there, put the um, candied uh, yams in there, put the turkey in there, put some mashed potatoes in there. Throw everything at it. I'm not sure if Awawa is doing it this year, 
but I know when I used to do flea marketing, Wawa, um, which don't even exist by where I live in South Carolina. It's more of a northern thing, I think. I'm not sure. I know they have it in New Jersey. Um, but uh, Wawa used to sell, and might still be selling. I'm not sure if they're still doing it this year. But they would sell like a little um, like sandwich thing that has like all of that already fixed up. And while it's quite a bit more expensive doing it that way, well, I was at like a flea market and it w when it was like just within walking distance of the place, it was pretty uh, pretty good to go for. They had a sandwich that was basically just like um, turkey gravy um, stuffing, cranberry sauce with like actual like real cranberries and everything too. I normally have the other variant. This is kind of like the canned stuff. But um, it was actually pretty good. Was, I think it was like five bucks for a sandwich though. <laughs> you could make like infinite of them for like... Um, Three times that price? Four times that price? Well, it really depends. <laughs> the turkey is the main thing that ups it up. Maybe you don't count the turkey. But um, you could easily do the other stuff for pretty cheap. But um, yeah, it was a little pricey, but um, gosh. <laughs> well, I had a flea market or something. It was just such a good uh, snack to pick up. Uh, let's see. I'll throw that over. Get our other thing down. Oh, you can't put Doritos in there. That'd be too crunchy. It has to be all soft stuff. You don't want to get, like, a blister in your tooth. That's a great way to, like, try to get one inside. You can't mix soft stuff with crunchy stuff. That's why I generally hate soft shell tacos, too. I mean hard shell. Did I say soft shell? I meant hard shell. Because it's like almost all stuff soft stuff. But the shell is crunchy. Doesn't make much sense. Like for the uh, durability of the taco, it makes sense. But from a just eating it sense, <laughs> it's just so much weirder. Compared to just having it as soft. The entire thing. Oh no, I don't care for crunchiness in tacos or burritos. Oh no, am I just weird? <laughs> I, I don't like the mixture of both soft things and um, and hard things. Kind of like how I don't like wet things getting into mashed potatoes. <laughs> this makes it weird. As paranoid as I am with that, I am with like soft things being with crunchy things. Just a weird combination. Oh well, yeah, technically Western and Eastern Hemispheres. Wait, or is that a thing? Isn't it mostly just because it's based on Equator? As far as Hemispheres are concerned. So isn't there technically only two Hemispheres? I don't know, is, is it broken up into more? Because as far as primary Hemispheres, there really is only two. Unless there's like sub-Hemispheres if you count like the Super Northern or the Super Southern. Like, near the poles. Uh, let's see. Because the tilt of the Earth, I believe, is the main thing that ends up causing it. The difference between the two. Uh, let's see. Well, East and Western Hemispheres aren't different, though, because of how the world turns. They kind of are the same. Uh, let's see what's we that though. I'll throw that down. Hey, we got an Anu. Nice. And a Rainia. Did we already do one with the Explorer? Or are we just grinding at this point? Uh, No, we still need two more. Gosh. Still need two more. And then we'll go do Explorer a little bit. I mean, uh, not Explorer. We're doing Explorer now. We'll do uh Ward Lore event a couple times. Just to show the team, if nothing else. Before we do the video for it. They'll probably call it a wrap. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that, dude.
Oh, I was almost going to take that for an extra turn because treasure map logic says that's an extra turn. But in a normal game, that's not an extra turn. I almost just took that because of all the treasure map we did this stream. That would have been a fail. That would have been a really funny fail. Uh, that's one thing that I always found really weird. Um, that uh, treasure hunt actually plays drastically differently than how you play a normal game. You actually have to play it inversely of how you would normally play. Because the normal strategy for um, the main system of Gems of War is you don't want to leave any combos or extra turns on the board after you do your turn and it ends. However, you want to do the exact opposite when you're doing a treasure hunt. You want to end up getting um, as uh, many chains as possible and leave them on the board for the following turn. Which is the exact opposite of how you would normally play the game. Also, things cascade differently. Because they only fall down by two instead of three. Due to the uh, one thing that goes there. There's so many aspects of it just play so much different than the main game. Which I wouldn't mind as much if we had multiple minigames. But it's like only one single minigame. Because Arena kind of isn't a minigame. Even though it kind of is. It's still like a battle system. But um, I, don't know, I still wish we would have gotten more. It seemed like we were going to at first. Because they were just adding minigame after minigame when we got like arena, then treasure hunt, then like a tweak to some other mode. And then um, we got like guild wars very soon after. And it was like, oh, we're just going to get like all these modes. And um, then they never really did another one that's kind of like treasure hunt where it's like a non-combat related one. And at this point, I'm not sure they ever will. Because they more of a financial interest to not do it. Because they want it to be um, things that you require troops and weapons for. Since, um, you know, you need to obtain troops and weapons. And that can theoretically sink resources or uh, encourage people to uh, spend money. Uh, let's see. So it's very unlikely we'd ever get something like Treasure Hunt as another new game mode. Ever. At least they can't monetize Treasure Hunt. Well, actually, that's not true. That's <laughs> That might be one of the reasons why we haven't had Treasure Hunt update yet. They're probably trying to figure out a way to monetize Treasure Hunt. Uh, let's see. We'll throw uh, that down. I'll see you at the fight. We'll catch you later. Hope you have a good week. They were making beef jerky. Jerky, nice. I haven't had beef jerky in a very long time. I actually really liked it when I was a kid. But these days, um, I don't think I've had it for like a decade. At this point. Hey, I found the Scorpius. Hey, I think we need to do one more explore run. So we'll kill that out. But yeah, the tasks took quite a bit longer this time around. And we still need one more set. Now we're good. Okay. One last explore. I just forgot to get some Explore 12 grinding in, if nothing else, into the stream. So we'll do this one last time, and then we'll go do a couple rounds of the uh, um, World Lore event real quick. Just to kind of show the team. I wouldn't be surprised if they make a tweak to Treasure Map. Where if you have a certain VIP level, you'll gain a benefit. They did it with Arena. That's their way of monetizing Arena. I feel like they're going to do the same with Treasure Hunt. I feel like they'll choose a value that they haven't used yet. Which means they're either going to do VIP 2. Or the very more likely the VIP 7. They might put something on VIP 7. Currently the highest any uh, benefit goes for VIP is VIP 6. As far as actual ones that make any difference in any way, shape, or form. As far as to like certain modes or certain things. Like, you know, the really substantial ones that unlock something that you wouldn't be able to have otherwise in any way. Because at 6 you get those VIP offer things. And while those are resources that exist in the game, those offers do not exist otherwise. For example, um, you can actually gain infinite um, um, gifts for your guild uh, without spending any money if you have VIP 6. Which is a feature that you don't have at any other point. It does require you to have spent the like 170 dollars or whatever it is for vip6 
or 180, whatever it is. I can't remember the exact value. But um, once you do, there's actually a task that um, gives you three gifts for 200 gems. And it's actually a positive gem exchange as well. So it's always worth going for. Because the purple's worth uh, 135 and the uh, the three gifts are 25 each. And it costs 200. I think it's like a 15 positive exchange or something like that. But um, yeah, there's no way to buy gifts otherwise for in-game currency unless you have that. But uh, I don't know. I feel like they would do it. Like something kind of perk on um, VIP 7. Because they did it for Arena, but they put it on VIP 4. Where you get one free pay-to-win win for um, having VIP 4 or higher for the Arena. And that's their way that they monetize Arena. So it's very likely they'll do something similar for Treasure Hunt. Where they'll make mark a certain uh, VIP level. And give a benefit to Treasure Hunt for having that VIP level. At least that's my guess. Seems like the most likely thing they would do. I don't want them to do that. <laughs> but uh, realistically, it's the most likely thing they would do. Ten extra starting moves for a certain VIP level. I don't think they would go that far. I think at most, if they were to do extra starting turns, it would be five extra starting turns. Or something like that. Five, six, somewhere around there. I don't think they would go as high as ten. Ten's almost double. It'd be less than 50% most likely extra turns. Which would be five or six or so. There we go. Okay, all tasks completed that are completable today without wasting gems. So now that we got all of the non-waste gems tasks completed, uh, let's go and just run the World Lore event, I guess, real quick. So uh, let's go set up our thingy for it. Uh, we're going to need 20% into... I don't even have the things bought yet, do I? I do not. Uh, let me go get those. Guild, go to the event, go to uh, claim all this. Go for tier 3, because I don't think we got a new weapon, do we? Oh, we broke our blue streak. Uh, let's see. Do we have a new weapon? No. That's what I thought. It's always like checking though. So let me go get our three little things. Just to help out the guild some. And because it's pretty good of value for the epic ones. Hey, we got a Legends. Gonna drop us a Mythic? Nope, no Mythic. Not today. Ha, <laughs> one turn per VIP. They would never make it that broken. They would never make it that broken. Maybe every, like, three VIP levels. But they would never make it every one VIP level. Also, I feel like they would have it burst all at once. If they were to put it at a certain location. Because they'd want to encourage people to go to that location. And they're likely going to try to encourage people to go to VIP 7 next. Because they currently have an incentive system to go for 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, that are pretty effective. 3 has free scouting. 4 has the extra turn for, I mean, the extra win... For uh, Arena, 5 has VIP keys and 6 has um, the third daily offer instead of just the 2. However, 7 doesn't currently have something like that. Nor does 1 or 2, but I they wouldn't do it on that because that would not really help. <laughs> they want people to go further into the VIP system, not grab the ones that are already there. Their um, incentive to go get 1 and 2 is just buy Death Knight armor. So they don't really need another incentive for that. So they're probably going to try to add incentive at some time pretty soon. Definitely within the next year to encourage people to get VIP 7. Actually, do I even have VIP 7? If I could get them to transfer my VIP from my Switch version, I definitely would. Uh, oh, we actually do have VIP 7. We're halfway through VIP 7. We'd actually have 8. VIP 8 if I got them to transfer my VIP points from my other one. So if they actually did do something that forced you to 7 for whatever reason. Um, we have it. Oh, no. There's extra space there. There's enough space for them to add, like, two or three things. Oh, no. Oh, wait, never mind. They already added it. Gosh, that box is big. Look at all these things that you could potentially have. Those cost, like, $9,000. <laughs> I'm not kidding, either. Uh, VIP 20 actually costs, like, 8000 something. I forget the exact amount. Though there are several hundred people that have it. 
But um, yeah, you get 100% XP. If you ever, <laughs> if you want to go throw a car val of worth of value at this game, you get 100% XP bonus, 150% soul percent souls, 200% gold, which is probably the most broken one. Uh, 1,000 gold login bonus per day, which is basically zero. Four glory keys per day, which is basically zero. 100% uh, extra gems whenever you buy gems in a shop, which is basically zero. <laughs> a VIP chest access. Uh, troops start at level 15. Automatic free scouting. Eight free gem keys per day, which actually isn't too bad. Um, 500 glory per day, which is useless. VIP uh, deal access, which is the one from the six. Uh, plus one starting um, win in arena, which we mentioned earlier. That's at the four. And 20 team slots, because you get one team slot per uh, level. What's our current bonus of that? And that's what we currently have at 7. The bonus is, like, so small compared to 20. But anyways, um... Let me go, uh... We did the thing, right? Uh... Then let's maybe go do the World Lore event, then. And then we'll call it a wrap. What was I doing? I was, like, switching my World Lore event. Oh, yeah, I was setting up my medals. And then I got sidetracked by talking about the thing. Um, so we'll do that. Do that. Okay. Now let's go and uh, do the event. A couple times. Oh, yeah, it would help if I go copy the team. I believe I currently have the cheap team here, so I don't want to overwrite it because I want to mention it for the thing. Uh, this is not the team you would most likely use, but it's a super cheap team. So I want to mention it for people that have uh, no other option. The other option, if you need a mid-range team, is Spam King Mikhail. Might even make up a team for it. Um, but yeah, I might try the King McHale version instead of Flame Refer. I'll give it a shot. Uh, do I have anything else saved? No. So let's replace out this. We're not going to need that for the thing. Uh, rename it to uh, World Event. World Event Cheap. Cheap doesn't fit. Uh, world Cheap. Uh, there we go. However, let's go use World Event. I'll try with King Mikhail first. I actually didn't even notice that was an option earlier. And that actually might be better than Hero. Did we max this already? Yes, we did. Uh, okay, let's go to the event a couple times. But this is the team we're going to be using. Most likely for most of the time. Uh, and it is this team right here. I'll change our class to... Actually, it doesn't even matter if we're using King Mikhail, does it? Actually, that class is already correct. Um, because we're going for like that burn option thing. Alright, let's give this a shot. See what happens. Um... Do we actually want him being in rage? He needs 9 more damage. That's like 27 damage from him being in rage to all enemies. That's a pretty substantial amount. But anyways, uh, let's roll with this. So, King Mikhail. Uh, Aquaticus. Uh, Teratus. And Flame of Anu. However, it might be worth replacing out Teratus if we're going to go the King Mikhail method. Just so we can slot Hero in there. Uh, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do what? Get high VIP? Like that hive of VIP? I don't know. Some people have a lot of money. Some people have a lot of money. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Which one of these are better? Or are they all the same? Uh, I should have kept the thing up. Uh, let's see... The almighty gems of Waffle I might actually forget from last night. Where's the event? Why can't they ever make these simple? Loading, loading, loading. Uh, Ifrit 8, Scarab 8. Though they're all the same. You just want to focus on the same one if you can. Yeah, they're all the same. So, um... We'll focus in alphabetical order. So we'll try doing Desert Trolls, then Ifrit's, then the other thing. Did Salty cancel our stream? I have no clue. She should have been streaming an hour ago. Doesn't she stream an hour earlier now? Because of time zone shift, but she hasn't reshift her shift. <laughs> because I believe she starts at 8.30 normally. So she would still be streaming now, even if she did start at 8.30. Yeah, this is pretty much the team we're going to be using. I might switch out Hero for something else. I mean, um, switch out this for Hero, I mean. I just kind of go down that route. Worst comes to worst, you go literally just spam King Mikhail if you have a bunch. 
And I do have a te cheap team mint uh, shown for the thing that we just had earlier. I'll have it as a copy paste pretty video too. Well, it's pretty much a straightforward throw down uh, big multi hit uh, options and then win. That's pretty much the game plan. Very big multi hit options into win. Oh, she's live? Okay, maybe she started at 9.30 then. Okay, right, she's up. Uh, I'm not sure where she's going over. We don't have anything new this Friday. Is she even going over anything? Or is she just streaming? What do we have next week's Friday? I'm trying to think. Because this week we have a uh, vault event, so there's nothing to go over in that regard. You know, I'm just going to start taking Scarab Knights instead of Ifrits. There's four of them here. Um, this bottom mythic isn't required. However, he does have Fairy Fire. If I'm not mistaken, he's the only option that has Fairy Fire. And this might help towards the later ends. But uh, really, all you need is just a bunch of King Mikhail's. It's probably fine. Spamming King Mikhail is probably the most effective way to do this event. I wonder if there's a mana link. It might actually just be more effective than anything. Just to spam him like crazy. If we have a brown or uh, yellow link anywhere in them. I'm not for sure we have yellow. Because of uh, that one night. That used to be meta. I'm not sure if we have a brown option though. Though yellow would make more sense given our entire team is yellow. Even using priest class for that would actually probably make a lot of sense. You know what? I might have to just even switch for that for the video. Just because it's so much cheaper. Because a lot of people might not have all these mythics and they're not even that useful. They might be for like the later parts. But uh, you know what? I'm just going to make this cheaper. So people can more easily build it. In case they don't have mythics. It was like the logical choice. Right, I'm just actually going to scrap these. I'll go with a much cheaper one. Um, so double king Mikhail. Hero as priest. And um, anything with Link. Preferably of the yellow variety. Which is U2. I guess maybe a paladin then. Because you overall do better than her. And I always need a weapon that isn't useless. Uh, weapon. Oh, Dawnbringer. There we go. Now we'll run it as Priest. For even more yellow. And what's the minus banner for this? I think we have a good one, don't we? Plus the yellow, plus one brown, exactly what we want. Hey, we get to use the new banner that came out last Friday. Or the other week. Wait, that wasn't last weekend, but you know, the two weekends ago. <laughs> Not last weekend, but the previous weekend. Um, you wouldn't want to use Dancing Daggers, mostly because it's blocked. Though it would be an alternative to Dawnbringer. Like, Dancing Daggers is a decent, okay weapon. Like, its damage output's pretty solid, but the problem is if you're using a pure yellow team, it's going to be blocked in most situations. That's okay alternative to Dawnbringer as far as damage output. But the fact it only uses one color is slightly problematic. Next week's an Australian holiday. I did not know that. So yeah, maybe she's going over next Friday's thing then. Blade Dancer used to be meta. I'm not sure if it would be the uh, best of choices for this event, though. But yeah, you also have King's Leanness for 50% mana start with Wild Folk. It's definitely an option you can end up utilizing. 
Oh yeah, we can use this knight to clean up whenever they have spell reduction. That's pretty cool. So we can do this. Boom. That's going to be more relevant towards the higher end. Obviously right now it's not going to come into play that often. But yeah, we got extra spell reduction this week, so. Will hopefully help carry us a little bit. That's pretty much all you got to do for the event. Just quick kill them with AoE. The big issue with uh, Dancing Daggers, um, it loses most of its value after its first cast. Or uh, Blade Dancer, I mean. And at the higher level ranges, it might be very annoying to use. It'll get a really good first value cast, but beyond that, it's going to be bad. Because their HP value would be so high. Running bl one uh, Blade Dancer could be effective, though. This is your first cast option. And then follow up with whatever else you have. But to kill them as your primary damage source, I don't think would work towards the later end. Because you'd eventually tear through all their armor. And they'd have a high HP value and then you don't have any boost ratio left. Which would be very problematic. But anyways guys, anyone else have any other questions? Otherwise, uh, we'll probably call it a wrap for tonight. We'll have the video up either uh, later tonight or more realistically probably early tomorrow morning at this point. <laughs> But uh, I'll try to get it recorded tonight if I can. Not sure if it'll be up tonight, though, is the thing. But, um, yeah, we'll go to that. And aside from that, we'll have our normal stream tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And other than that, um, yeah, Thanksgiving in two days. Or three days, but, you know, it's 26. Uh, let's see. Take that over. Uh, what is the best way to acquire uh, Norbert's turnip? You have to wait uh, for it to show up in um, a um, Zayjin event. Whenever it's a Zayjin event, you can obtain it within Soul Forge for um, those brown and yellow um, colored shards. As well as uh, a little bit of diamonds. But it is only obtainable during a Zayjin event. The only way, other way that you would end up being able to obtain it is if you happen to get lucky off a $5 offer and see it as your $5 offer, you could take it on a given day. Um, but those occur like about once a week, and it's a completely random weapon that you don't own. And the chance that specifically something you want is very unlikely. And even if it is, it's still money and not in-game uh, um, currency, unfortunately. I wish they just had two of them. Like one of them for money, one of them for gems. Obviously not the same one, but you know. Just to have a option to do it for in-game currency. But, uh, yeah, the most realistic way is to wait till a Zayjin event. Uh, I don't believe we have one coming up. Uh, it could still be months before we get it. But, yeah, Norbert's Turnip is a pretty good looping option. You can still infinite loop without it, though. Um, mostly Farce Troll, Double Truffle into Hero with Green Storm. Um, that's the most consistent infinite loop in the game, even more so than Nor Norbert's Turnip. So it's not like you're missing out on the best infinite loop team by not having it. However, there are some pretty decent infinite loop teams that can be made out of it, even though Truffle is technically better in most situations. Uh, the main situation I feel like Norbert's Turnip is actually potentially better is on defend. Like if you're making a Guild War defend team, Norbert's Turnip can be a little bit better. However, it's not that much better and doesn't make too big of a difference. But um, February 1st for Turnip, thank you. Um, so yeah, I was right, about a few months. That is exactly a few months from now. But uh, thank you for that, for checking it. But yeah, uh, November, uh, February 1st, you'd be able to get Turnip. Because that's the next Asian event. So you got to wait like three months, pretty much. Which is more like two and a half months. But you know, <laughs> still got a little bit of time before then. But at least you'll have plenty of resources by then. It'll cost... Uh, we actually know exactly what it'll cost. It'll cost... Um, uh, it'll cost 600 brown, 600 yellow... Three Celestials, 300 Diamonds, and 15,000 Souls. Make sure you have that loot by fe uh, February 1st, which is pretty easy to get. But, um, yeah, it's all this except um, brown and yellow. 
would be the two 600 colored ones. So make sure you have that by February 1st and they can get turned up that week. But anyways, guys, on February 1st. But anyways, guys, I'm going to be heading out for now. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we'll be back tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same time as always. And we'll mostly be doing the delves for Sunken uh, Fleet, right? Yeah, Sunken Fleet. And I'll have the video up very soon, TM. And uh, we'll go from there. And we will still be streaming um, Thanksgiving night. I probably won't be doing a Thanksgiving Day stream, but, you know, we'll be still doing our normal stream at night. And uh, if nothing else, maybe we'll throw a little bit of Animal Crossing at the end of it. I probably won't divide the stream, though. I kind of want to do a stream s specifically for Animal Crossing, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time. And uh, we'll probably just throw it in on our normal nightly stream or something. <laughs> something a little festive. But uh, anyways, guys, catch you guys later. Uh, enjoy the holiday. Catch you guys soon. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>